art always contributes to the community and I think the mural it gives credit to people that we're not always thinking about. Even though they were all very important people and very important activists, I think someone may walk by and, you know, remember M Malala or remember Nelson Mandela. And so I think that in combination with art, it one makes the community more beautiful and it allows people to remember something they may not necessarily be thinking about while they're here in Moab. First and foremost, we're a we're a community resource center, which means that anytime our doors are open, anyone in the community can walk in, and you know whatever situation they've got going on, whatever problem they need they need help with, we will um, we'll do our very best to to help them meet that need. Um, sometimes through our own services, sometimes through um, you know working with community partners and other agencies, um, and then we also do a lot of community outreach and education, and a lot of youth outreach and education. So. You know, sometimes we're dealing, you know, putting out fires, dealing with homelessness and, and mental health and substance use, and then sometimes we are making instruments from all over the world with kids. And that can all happen in like a single afternoon. The Multicultural Mural Project was started in 2014, to the best of my recollection, and it was completed, it took about three years to complete. Because the Multicultural Center isn't an arts organization, we, you know, we're a social service organization, but we do see and appreciate and often use the arts as a way to meet our mission of building bridges across language and culture through family support, community collaboration, and education. So the idea of, of this mural was really um, a fantastic way to meet our mission, to involve people from our community artists and all of the people who participated on the, the selection committee for, for which activists would be uh, highlighted. And then from the very, very beginning, we saw it as an, an opportunity to use an education piece as well. It, really began with the need to cover up the an eyesore area on our property. There was a junkyard on our property and uh, we, we knew we wanted to cover that and so we had decided we would we would build a fence and if we were going to build a fence you know we wanted to put our own flavor on that. We wanted to do a public art project that was um, Dem demonstrative of, of our values and what we're doing here and that would contribute to the celebration of diversity uh, here in Moab and all around. The piece that I created for the multicultural mural um, was the, the piece for Harvey Milk. Spent a lot of time in the San Francisco Bay Area in the Castro District and learned a lot about Harvey Milk and um, developed you know a sense of I wouldn't say like a connection, but a sense of understanding and, and kind of a, um, a commitment to helping spread the message that Harvey Milk and his followers were also trying to, to share and spread as well. And so when I moved to Moab, to this high desert, and had the opportunity to create a mural about a person that I had a connection with from, from my youth or you know my young adulthood, it felt really meaningful and another way that I could kind of give back to this community while still honoring my own past and my roots. So the piece that I did was Jane Goodall. Um, I have always really, really been infatuated with Jane Goodall. It was like the life that I saw myself living at some point, like working with chimpanzees and just like, you know, becoming best friends with them. So when I saw that one on there, I was duly excited because I think she's a really incredible person and I saw it as my opportunity to add an animal. <laughs> and I was like, no one else is gonna be doing that. I've gotta get Jane Goodall. So that was the one I went for. It was a time of tears and trial. Standing Bear and 26 others decided to reclaim their land, to stand and return to go home to Nebraska, to return to the ground beside the swift running water. The small band of Ponkas made it home after 10 weeks 
of toil, hunger. We spend a lot of time in the classroom, um, and sometimes that's you know our staff going into the elementary school or into the preschool or the middle school, um, and a lot of times that's them coming to us and being in being in our space, um, you know whether it's our office or outside, um, and I I think it's great for I don't know this is like it's you know it's an office technically but it's colorful and vibrant and welcoming. Um, and even though sometimes we're dealing with really hard, sad things here, we we try and do that in a way that that makes it okay. It's like you know, those things are going to happen, and um, we have a, a comfy space where we can confront that. Um, and I think having you know the outdoor diversity classroom is just another place where that can happen. I think a lot of public art spaces or um, historical sites, you could call them, you know, diversity classrooms, with indoor or outdoor diversity classrooms. But what what makes ours specifically more one of its kind is the curriculum that matches each of the panels. We asked, we had a teacher who volunteered to write that curriculum, and it's specifically tied to the Utah Public Schools core curriculum. We wanted the mural, there's all these, there's a lot of needs that it met, and it was important to me to make it complementary to what our students were learning in the schools to reinforce that, because that, in education, you know, we, anything, anytime we can reinforce that, it really, it helps to integrate what we're learning, I believe. So, you know, the mural goes, it meets that need, but it goes outside of that too, right? So we can, we can reinforce what kids are learning in the classroom, but we can go above and beyond that and, and into critical thinking in many ways. Painting my piece, the Harvey Milk piece, was really important to me and special for me. And every time I see it, when I take my daughter, you know, from our house to the park, we pass by it and I get to point it out and teach her a little bit about Harvey Milk. Um, but as a whole, the whole project, it just brings this immense sense of pride. Um, and it also reminds me of the importance of investing time in learning about these leaders from all different cultures and not spending too much time focusing on, you know, a specific um, group of marginalized voices, but recognizing that our community is made up of like all kinds of incredible people. It's amazing to be a part of something that's been here for seven plus years now. Um, when I did it at the time, I didn't really know that I would necessarily continue to be here in seven years. I didn't really know that the person next to me and the person on the other side of me would become like very good friends of mine. So it's just really cool to like every time I pass by, I think like, wow, that was like a very different time in my life. but. Here it is, and it's served now like how many years of, you know, elementary school grades that have come here on field trips, and like, that's so amazing. And I think just getting that recognition is really funny because I don't like identify as an artist in my day to day life. I work at a hospital, so every so often someone will be like, Is that your name on the mural? And I'm like, Oh, yes, it is. I, I did do that, in fact. So it's kind of this fun, like, you know, we all wear a lot of hats here. and. A lot of people don't necessarily actively like do art for their living because that would be very difficult, but most of the artists who contributed to that mural do other things in the community as well, and this is kind of just like a passion project. So I think the passion really comes through, and it's something I still really feel strongly about. I feel like the impact that the mural has had in the community is it's added beauty to our community. Anytime you, you add public art, you know, it, it, it is adding beauty. It, people get to see that beautiful mural instead of that junkyard. But it, a visual representation too, I think, you know, there's, there's the culture, your own personal culture, your family culture, your organizational culture, but what about the culture of the community that you live in? Do they, um, you know, put importance on art or equity or diversity, things like that. So having something you know, so large and bright and colorful, I think it speaks to, you know, this is a community that, that celebrates diversity, wants to inspire people by, you know, highlighting activists and having community projects that are collaborative. Um, I think all of that speaks to the, the culture, not just of MVMC, but of, of Moab and what we want it to be, what we're striving to, to have it be.